Hey, Happy Friday. This week, Amazon rolled out free internet to everyone in the United States with a twist. Of course, Opal released just the weirdest statements ever, and Microsoft decided to reboot all of Windows once again. What could go wrong? Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, this week we start the brief with the Sony ZV-E1, which is a new super compact full frame camera for shooting video for YouTube and vlogging for just $2,200, not bad. An even more compact setup also came out this week in the form of the Insta360 Flow, which is a gimbal that also opens up to become a monopod from where it can automatically follow you around and film you. I have zero interest in phone gimbals, but I particularly like how over the top Insta360 always goes with all of their stuff. So this thing is hilariously inspired by nothing, I guess, but you can actually ask them to go print your own completely custom design text and logo under that plastic. The thing also functions as a 2,900 milliamp hour power bank, and it also comes with the cutest little flash ever. Next, we saw two worthy special edition releases this week. First, the Harry Potter edition Redmi Note 12 Turbo, which is mostly interesting for featuring the brand new Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. And second, a Zelda-inspired Nintendo Switch OLED. That one is coming out for $360, though sadly without any bundled Zelda games. Also this week, we learned that Apple's WWDC 2023 starts on the 5th of June. And while we do expect the usual updates to iOS, Mac OS, Watch OS, and so on, the long rumored headset has apparently been delayed, so that might or might not come. On that note, Disney officially quit the metaverse this week via layoffs, and other firms are considering doing the same too, leading to words like the meh metaverse emerging. Not bad. Someone definitely give that journalist a raise. Next, this week Microsoft's Bing chatbot started getting ads within the chat experience, which means no doubt Google employees are watching them very, very closely. They're just quietly drooling in the corner as they're contemplating the concept of combining AI with ad money. It's just too beautiful. <laughs> Also this week, Huawei announced that it had developed its own chip design software, known as Electronic Design Automation, or EDA software, to help design chips at 14 nanometers. Now this is something like four or five generations behind the state-of-the-art solutions, but you basically can't make chips without this, and they have been banned from using any international leaders like Cadence and Synopsys, so this is really good news for them anyway. Also this week, an open letter was signed by more than 1,000 researchers and technology companies company leaders like Elon Musk, which called for a six-month pause on next-gen AI research to figure out the laws and ethics and whatnot. Not a bad idea inherently, but I guess nobody's gonna stop their research just to see their competitors quietly catching up with them in the background. And I guess you can't expect countries like China to stop their research either, so I don't really see this going anywhere. And finally, Lenovo killed off its Lenovo Legion gaming phone business this week, leaving Android-based smartphone gaming on the edge. And I'll talk about the viability of niche phones and the future of mobile gaming in general, plus also our predictions for WWDC on today's episode of our Friday Chill Out podcast. Links are in the description below. Okay, my first story of the week is going to be Amazon opening up its new type of internet to everything and everyone, and it's called Sidewalk. So Amazon has been working on Sidewalk for a few years as a new way to stay connected, and it basically operates as a long-range, low-bandwidth mini mesh network using the 900 megahertz spectrum, on top of also using some Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy to connect to, well, just about anything. Sidewalk uses newer Echo and Ring devices in people's homes, as well as even dedicated Pro devices connected to the internet to supply their networks, while the other Edge devices relay data between each other, and the aim is to offer a ubiquitous internet connection to IoT devices without the need to directly connect all of them to a Wi-Fi router or to set up a full mobile internet connection. Examples are things like tile trackers, which are already using Sidewalk to extend tiles network coverage to locate misplaced items, and then there are pet finders, humidity sensors, and so on. Data speed from a single hub device that shares its internet are capped at 80 kilobits per second, and Amazon promises to never use more than 500 megabytes a month, which honestly can still be quite a lot depending on your connection. 
There was quite a bit of controversy when Amazon initially rolled this out because they apparently just turned this on by default on all Echo and Ring devices. So they actually just started sharing random people's internet with other people by default without asking them really. But now it is going to be turned into something that people have to opt in to. So that's much better. And Amazon is also talking quite a big security game. The company promises that they're using encryption and that they're obscuring the user identities and data from other users. And so overall, it all should be super safe. Also, according to their newly released maps, Sidewalk's now free to use network covers 90% of the US population, which is pretty wild. This means that there's ubiquitous free internet for IoT devices almost everywhere that people live. There are legitimate concerns about whether or not it's great to have a mega corporation have this much control over our networks, but that aside, this is pretty cool infrastructure. Also, if you remember, companies like Opal and Samsung have, separate from this, also just started figuring out how to harvest enough energy from ambient radio waves as well. So if you combine those two, then we could theoretically have devices that are both powered and connected without cables or without any dedicated connections. That's wild. I don't know if that's a utopia or a dystopia, maybe it's both, but it also somehow feels just inevitable. Fun fact, there was also a blockchain-based project like this called Helium, which suggested actually paying users for their network, and while that theoretically sounds like an actual good use case of crypto technologies, the project kind of unsurprisingly didn't really work out. Oh well. Okay, for my second story of the week, there are new rumors about both Oppo and OnePlus completely abandoning the European market. And to counter these rumors, the companies put out their own statements and they were just hilariously confusing. So this week, multiple leakers and reporters sent out news that Oppo and OnePlus are pulling out of Europe, starting with a full exit from Germany, the UK, France and the Netherlands, and other markets were supposed to follow soon too. The companies have already temporarily been banned from Germany due to patent disputes with Nokia, but this news would mean that they were at least considering a complete exit. So Oppo's PR decided to try to calm things down, and here's what they said. The European market has always been one of our key markets. We have made a good start in the European market in 2023, and our business in Europe is as usual. Also, they highlighted recent European launch events for the Find N2 Flip and their attendance at MWC 2023 which is genuinely nice, but those are neither confirming nor denying the rumors. Then after further questioning, they said that our business in the EU is normal at present, which again, doesn't say anything. Then OnePlus chimed in to say that, quote, OnePlus will not exit from Europe and the UK and maintains stable operations in local markets, which is actually a real statement. But then the parent company Oppo once again came to make things less clear by saying the following. Oppo and OnePlus are committed to all the existing European markets. We had a great start in 2023 with the successful launches of several products in Europe and have a lineup of upcoming products for the rest of the year. And again, that's a statement that is very careful to sound like they're gonna stay, but no explicit confirmation. Now, I don't wanna throw any PR people under the bus because I'm sure that they're just not allowed to say this, but man, yikes. Now my hope is that this move is mostly a bluff from Oppo and that they want Nokia to think that they are willing to completely exit the European market rather than paying them a license, because that would then perhaps force Nokia to become a little bit more flexible with their negotiations. But who knows? Okay, and for my third story of the week, apparently Microsoft is giving Windows a complete reboot once again. Let's hope this one goes better than the last five or so attempts that they had. According to a report by the very reliable Zach Bowden at Windows Central, Microsoft will try to once again cut out the old legacy parts of its OS with Windows 12 and try to speed the operating system up, possibly by next year. The effort has the codename of Core PC, and if that sounds familiar, it's because it's familiar to the now dead Windows Core OS, which was supposed to ship with the now also dead Windows 10X. Again, failed Windows reboots are a bit of a thing. Either way, Core PC will focus on making the Windows code base more modern and more modular. Specifically, Core PC will introduce state separation to Windows in the sense that the core part of the system, like apps and the operating system itself, will get split into separate partitions and will be kept away from user data. This is stuff that we already have on modern operating systems like iOS and Android, and it will make the operating system more modular, faster to update, and so on. In addition to that, the extra modularity would also let Microsoft 
offer different editions of Windows for different hardware more easily. So for example, they're working on a version that is lighter and more toned down for education to take on Chrome OS, where the operating system would reportedly be 60 to 75% smaller than current Windows. That is pretty massive. Legacy Win32 apps would still optionally be supported, but through a separate optional compatibility layer called Neon, while computers that don't need this app framework could just skip that entire giant messy hairball. Sounds good. It hasn't worked the last five or so times that they've tried pretty much the same thing, but maybe it will work this time. You know, maybe the thing that Windows has been lacking all this time was just Panos Panay, who will set things right. He has been pretty quiet lately, so something has to be brewing on the horizon. Now, the other main focus area of Windows 12 will be putting AI basically anywhere Microsoft can think of. That is, in fact, kind of the direction of all technology going forward for the next decade or so. And if you'd like to become an expert on this topic, AI that is, then check out my sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant has fantastic interactive courses on how AI and neural networks work, and they also cover other upcoming and well-established computing areas, such as quantum computing, computer memory, plus introductions to algorithms and more, so you can build a complete picture. Unlike other courses, Brilliant doesn't just teach you a tool or a framework, but actually helps you reach in and get a real fundamental understanding of a complex topic like AI. And big topics are broken down into smaller digestible chunks where you can do an exercise to engage with it and understand it right away. This interactive design is incredibly effective for helping you learn and teachers include people from Microsoft to Google to MIT and lately even popular YouTubers like Kurzgesagt, Real Engineering and Sabine Hoss who obviously really know how to teach. You can try Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash TFC and the first 200 people who sign up also get 20% off their premium subscription. So check them out. Links are in the description and I'll see you next Friday.